Auburn's recent track record with defensive backs has been elite. Well, they just added another one. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining us today, it is Locked On Recruiting Insider and Auburn Daily Recruiting Writer, Brian Smith, our recruiting coverage here. Uh, throughout the Locked On Podcast Network is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Uh, we'll jump into the recruiting talk in just a second, but first things first, I don't really know how to discuss this, but obviously if you hadn't heard what happened over the weekend with uh, with Brian Batty and his brother, uh, several reports out there, um, that they, they were both shot over the weekend, which is awful. Um, Brian's brother passed away and, uh, you know, you're, you're reading and hearing different things about the status of, uh, of Brian. So thoughts and prayers. I, I can't imagine what that family is going through right now. So thoughts and prayers to them. I, I don't really know what else to say. So we'll leave that there pivoting to, uh, to, to football news that happened over the weekend. Brian Auburn picked up the commitment from, a. Uh, a corner that seems kind of solid all around the board. I assume he'll be a boundary corner once he gets to Auburn. But of course, we're talking about the addition of Dante Core from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And that location is important in a second. And Brian will tell you why. But you look at this guy's tape. He just seems solid at everything. I don't think one specific part of his game is like, wow, that's elite. But I think he's above average at kind of everything. And, and you take those, Brian. Corner is always a position of need in every class. Auburn just had a good group come in in this this 24 yeah. group, now 25. They're going to back it up. they got Devin Williams. We'll talk about him in a minute. Yeah, Dante, who's a big, strong kid. Yeah. For his size, I met him at uh, Auburn Spring Game. Fort Walton Beach is unique because it's in the panhandle. It's kind of in the middle. And honestly, there aren't many guys that scout it. He hasn't been seen by many eyeballs, myself included, at a camp or anything. So his rankings, I don't put a lot of stock in, but I do like his film because he reads plays and he makes big plays. He's a guy yep. that takes some risks, but like you said, he's not like an elite burner. He's not a guy that's massive. He's just good at everything, and he's a good athlete. So a lot of upside with him, and he'll fit into Auburn in terms of culture as well. Just a great young man. Yeah, I could see why some scouts, the few scouts that have gotten out to see him, which like you said, it hasn't been much, and I'd love you to explain the geography of that in a second if you don't mind. But the you pull up his tape the little bit that I could find. It's like, he passes the eye test. It's like, yeah, that guy's oh, literally yeah. one of the best players, if not the best player on the field. It's just, you know, the first thing when, when people get a, get the, you know, the news notifications to their phone or they see it on Twitter or whatever, they're like, Oh, well, he's a three star. And you know, on three, I don't think it's ranked them. And ESPN hasn't ranked them. And he's a three star on two, four, seven arrivals. And so, you know, fans are like, Oh, okay. All right, cool. Whatever. Cause Auburn fans have kind of gotten accustomed to, to getting four stars pretty much across That's the board true. with the exception of a few, a few five, which is great. You know what a difference a few years makes, but this is a guy like, I don't think you need to look at the stars for this guy because like you said, not a whole lot of people have really seen Dante core yet. No, they haven't. And here's the deal in our industry, Atlanta, Birmingham, Orlando, Miami, pretty much everybody lives in one of those or is at least in them a lot because that's where the players are. And if you're a West, you're in Dallas or Houston. Anything else is pretty random. Sure. Um, you know, I like Andrew Ivins just moved to Orlando. He, he was in Fort Lauderdale. He's, he's going to stay somewhere in central to South Florida. John Garcia lives in South Florida, et cetera. It's just the way it is. So this kid is in a very unpopulated area, so he's yeah. not going to get as many looks. That's just the way it is. So he needs to have better film as a senior to really rise. So it's interesting that Auburn has seen him live and they took him this early. So they've seen something that other people haven't been on as always. Well, a lot of the guys I just mentioned are my buddies. I'll take the guys that are making seven figures every time. Yeah. And we talked about, um, we talked about this a few years ago with JC Hart when he was at Lochapoca. And it's just like some guy that, you know, 
wasn't really being recruited that high because he plays at you know at Lo Chapoca, which does not draw a lot of eyeballs, as you know, Brian. But the coaching staff saw him a bunch, and they're like, "We really like this kid. Like, let, let, you know, let, let's go ahead that's and add this guy." And so sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes that's all you need. And, and if Auburn's going to catch up with with some of the that you know fight to get in that top tier of the SEC, these are some of these guys that you just need to find. You just need to find these guys and. These kids, not everybody's like this, but these kids realize and recognize who's the first to kind of reach their hand out and say, hey, come on, join our program. We want you. These kids remember that. That's an important part of this. So Dante Cora, I think his numbers and rankings will rise throughout all of this because he's committed to an SEC school. That's just part of it. But also, I, I think he's going to get more attention because I do think he's a, a good football player. Well, Ole Miss, Missouri, and a bunch of schools were looking at Florida. So it's not like Auburn was an anomaly and his next offer was Savannah State. Just to be clear for everybody out there, yeah. he had power four offers, including Southeastern Conference brethren. That being the case, I was told a couple months ago at the spring game, it was going to be Ole Miss or Auburn, probably Auburn. And then he finally pulls the trigger. So now the question is, does he only play corner? Uh, I think he could play possibly nickel in some capacity, and he's strong enough to play in the deep secondary, depending on how much weight he puts on. He could maybe be a safety. So Auburn's recruited well at corner. He got Devin Williams. He got him from being right. He's really, really good. I think he would be more your wide side of the field, or, you know, cornerback. He sure. can really run. So now you got two corners and you're still going after kids. Obviously, I went and saw Naeem Offer this past weekend. You're going to recruit him until he tells you to go away. Mm -hmm. If they take anybody else, it's got to be an elite guy. Uh, yeah, your third guy, and that's fine because Auburn's in a pretty good spot. Yeah, Dante Cor listed at six one one sixty five. Does that seem right to you? Does six one seem right, or or would you be shocked if he came in at you know right at six foot or five eleven? I uh, six foot's always I always take an inch off in terms of reality. What they're listing, sure. you take an inch, but he's built like a boxer. Kids put together, so he'll end up weighing one eighty five something like that. He'll be fine. Yeah, it looks like he's got some extra room in the frame to add some weight on. So we'll see what happens there. As far as you talking to him, just as a human being, what stood out? You know, does he seem seem pretty put together? Everything that I, I said about him a minute ago, just to a T, A to B, traditional deep South kid, South kid, yes, sir, no, sir, was happy to be at Auburn, really enjoyed it, loved the coaches and all that. And was just glad that he was being recruited. He was happy with what he'd come along to be because he'd gotten some offers recently and Auburn was one of the first, like you mentioned. Yeah. That was why they stuck out. Like it matters. Right. If you're one of the first ones that are, it's a major program to extend a young man, a scholarship offer, it's going to give you a little edge. And then the visit kind of capped it off. Um, he, he was open-ended about it. He really liked it in spring game. I remember we were talking about that the day of the weather was perfect. And that it was a beautiful off. day. It was a great day. 100%. And I was like, this is the way it should be. I remember taking a photo of him, a big smile on his face. And he, he's just one of those kids that kind of fits in with the Auburn family atmosphere to a T. And that the Panhandle kids are pretty much that way as well. Yep. So Dante Core, a part of Auburn's 2025 class. Who he's joining, I think, is a huge part of all of this. And you already teed it up a little bit, Brian. We'll touch on that next right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you've got to check out our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn gets it. If you're a small business owner or a small business, you know somebody that, that's over the hiring aspect and human resources and all of that, you're probably doing a million other things. Odds are. And so... LinkedIn gets it, and they're willing to equip you with the tools you need to find all of this because you don't want hiring to take forever. You want to find the right person as quick as you can, and LinkedIn can help you do that. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Brian, when you look at the defensive backs that are now committed in Auburn's 2025 Class, the other corner that joins Dante Core, or I guess Dante Core joins Devin Williams, five foot 11, 170 pound kid from Buford High School. And this is probably the most underrated player, or one of the most underrated players. I asked you this question last week, and you said Ryan G, which, which makes sense. But Devin Williams is a guy that's very, very good, 
and isn't getting talked about a ton. It's a little surprising because he plays for Buford. If you follow recruiting in the South, that's a high school, whether you want it to or not, that's going to come across your computer screen a lot. And yeah, I've, I've got a lot there. of guys for sure. Uh, that's like a college campus. They got multiple football fields. Like it's life and death. Yeah. And they play a national schedule, et cetera, et cetera. When I watched his film and I said to myself, okay, what does he do best? This, that, and the other. It was hard to narrow down to one thing because of his foot speed out of back pedal was great. Got good hands. He can play bump. He can play off coverage. He's been coached. He's a little bit like Jalen Crawford, the kid they signed in the 24 class. Uh, Jalen may be taller. I don't know. It depends on your perspective, but very similar frames and a lot of same skills too. You keep getting guys like that changes your defense. And we know DJ Durkin likes to come after you with a lot of multiplicity with his blitz packages. Yeah. I don't have guys that can play man on the back end or you're going to get smoked. So we were out there at practice this spring. We talked about, man, they're they're blitzing like crazy. And you mm-hmm. talked about it a lot too. You freeze and right. say, hey, you know, we got to get the defense ready. All these quarterbacks ain't ready for it. Sometimes they, they would get home a lot. It was because the corners did their job. So if you don't keep recruiting kids like this, you're in trouble. But right now I would say Devin is more likely to play early between him and, and Dante because he's played against – so many elite teams in high school, he's just been prepped more. Right. But if you're starting out your class and you're in May and you've got two kids like this, you're again, you're at a really good spot. Yeah, you're happy with where you're at. And the stacking those classes back to back, we've talked about it a lot with defensive line and linebacker, and we're now seeing it with corner too. And you can almost make the case that they've done it three classes in a row because the class before that, oh yeah, K and Lee was kind of your headliner amongst oh, the corners. Absolutely. And and so all of a sudden and Defensive back isn't really where Auburn has struggled or been inconsistent no, with. They've true. always had like a shutdown corner, and you know, Kane Lee's going to be that guy this year. I think Jay, Jay Crawford's the next one in line. And we'll see if it's, if Devin Williams can kind of keep that torch going as far as Auburn having to shut down number one corners. But to me, this just solidifies it when you look at Dante Core, just because I think the floor for Core rhymed um, it is pretty high. And I think the ceiling for Williams is extremely high. And so to me, if, if you're an Auburn fan and you're looking at the future at certain positions, defensive back, it's been good for the past decade, and it's going to be good for at least the next five years with what's coming in. In 2016, the four teams to make the finals were Washington, Clemson, Ohio State, and Bama. You know what they all had in common, Zach? The next spring, all four of them had at least one, if not two players at corner that were drafted in the first or second round. Sure. If you do not have corners, you are not a contender. It's just simple as it gets. Now, I'm not saying Auburn's going to have two guys out of these couple kids we just had, but at least from a on paper standpoint and watching high school film, these are the kids you want. Like Devin, for instance, got a ton of offers, and Dante was just starting to get them. Mm Jalen Crawford had a ton. Auburn's doing their due diligence and getting key players, especially local kids. Getting Crawford's like a big deal. You got to get those guys. Now the question is, can they get another safety on the back end? Something like that to add to it. Because right now, Auburn's a pretty good spot at corner. And I think that you freeze is pretty happy with where they're at. Yeah, I mean, Auburn has had corners drafted seemingly every year where there was one that deserved being drafted, of course. But we we just saw DJ James and Nehemiah Pritchett get drafted, both to Seattle. Very fun. I think DJ got drafted way later than he should. I think he was a steal. I've been very consistent with my thoughts on DJ James, really, since he was a freshman. But now when you look at, okay, the next corner that gets drafted out of Auburn is Hugh Freeze's guy. Like Hugh Freeze brought him in. Uh, and I guess Keontae, technically, we'll see if he truly does play corner. But to me, you talk about guys getting drafted in the first two rounds. Like, I think Kane Lee's that good. I do. It's not going to happen this year. It'll happen, happen next year. But I think Kane Lee's that good. I think Jay Crawford is that good. And I don't, th- I don't feel crazy for saying that about either one of them. Kay and Lee's a kid. When I saw him at the end of his sophomore year, I said, that's an NFL player. So I'm special dude, his feet, man. It's just, there, there's no wasted movement with him. None. When I went to Cedar Grove to see him at his high school, just talking to the people around like Kay and knew me and stuff, but like he was so locked in at practice. He'd walk by me and like from three inches away, he wouldn't say no. Like he, he just has kind of a Jordan mentality. And he's a kid that went from 155 to three months later, he was 175. Once he went to that Under Armour camp, real okay, I'm legit. The light went on, and he's been that way ever since. He's been that way since he's been at Auburn too. Mm-hmm. I talked to him at one of the media functions after like he's he's ready to roll. 
I think he's going to be one of the breakout corners in the SEC this year, freshman to sophomore year. It's not not shocking. Sure. But he's going to be on an island against some of the guys this year. He's going to get his chance, and then after his junior year, I have two years of that, I, I think he'll probably head to the NFL. Where are you on Antonio Kite? I don't think I've talked to you about Antonio Kite. Of course, the transfer from Alabama that they added this offseason. Where are you with Kite? <sighs> That's one I want to see. Like, what happened? What? Because, like, physically – that can't have every trade. Yeah, I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. So that makes me wonder, like, if it's not a physical thing, why, like, what happened? Was he just, I mean, Alabama's got plenty of DBs. Don't get me wrong. But, but like, not as many as they used to have. Yeah, I mean, they just lost two first-round picks. Quarterback, <laughs> that's ridiculous. So <laughs> I think it's interesting that he's at Auburn now. Maybe it's a situation where he comes in and plays right away. Maybe not. It's just system. Uh, Durkin's system's probably not the easiest because of all the blitzes. But if he figures it out, like the kids' athleticism and length are exactly what you need in the Southeastern Conference. You don't know, have it in the back end. You're going to get mm -hmm. bombed in this way. You're going to get bombed. I don't care how many D linemen you got. You got to have some guys at safety and corner that can cover. Kite's physical traits are sickening. So I'm curious to see if they're going to use nickel safety corner. He can probably play about anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's stay on the topic of defensive back. So all their names are so similar. I don't want to get them mixed up. Antoine Fagans is the new transfer from Arkansas State. Okay. That's correct, right? And then Antoine um, is the one in high school, and Traquan is the one that was at Southern Cal. Yeah, Traquan transferred to UCF. There's a lot of smoke that you know he and Auburn were going to be a match. That clearly didn't happen, but. Um, Antoine has committed and then Anquan, yeah, is, is the safety from Thompson who Auburn appears to be in a great situation, a great spot to get any day now. Like that, that commitment could come, that graphic could fall from the sky at any moment. Um, when Anquan, if Anquan Fagans joins this class, where does it put Auburn's defensive back class in comparison to the rest of the country? If Fagans were to commit soon. That means it would be a top tier kind of group because you'd already have three guys mm -hmm. that you not only like of it, like you really, really like. They're good. They're yeah. early. So Fagans is a kid that's a ball hawk too. He could play corner, but he plays for Thompson, arguably the best program in state Alabama. He could play running back, receiver, corner. It doesn't matter. He's that kind of athlete. I love him at free safety though. He makes plays that you can't teach because of his sideline to sideline speed. Sure. He had a pick in the state title game that is like, that is not normal for a high school kid to get that far over. It's right before the sideline, got one foot down and went out of bounds. Just athlete, just an athlete. So I like him a lot. I think he's a top 100 talent and Auburn would be very fortunate to have, to have him on the roster. Historically limited sample size, just because the transfer portal hasn't been what it has been, but you've been covering recruiting for a long time. You know what family impacts have on where kids go to school. Anquan's older brother joining and committing to the Tigers. That can't hurt, right? <laughs> I mean, if it did, there's something going terribly wrong there. But no, I, <laughs> right. I would. If assume... it hurts, Auburn probably wouldn't add him. It's just my <laughs> guess. Yeah. <laughs> well said. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a pretty interesting point because that's a family that's just loaded. One brother is going to UCF. Incredible. One at Auburn. And ones can go pretty much wherever he wants. It's still a high school. Well yeah. done. Well yeah, done. No indeed. kidding. <laughs> well done, Fagan's fam. No question. But yeah, I would assume Auburn's there, but I, I've heard Georgia and Miami, all these schools still pushing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what his timeline is because you and I have heard on and off again about him committing. So I've yeah. given up. I have no idea. And maybe it's best that he takes some of it just to get it out of the way. I'd rather do that anyhow. And that goes for all the other kids that commit and then take five visits. Another story for another day. Okay. But Auburn is the leader in the clubhouse. Is seems that way. I mean, unless there's something I don't know. And I never discount Georgia with any kid. I don't care what state they're from and they're after, but I still think it's Auburn. So you talked to one of the best players in the country recently. I want to I want to talk to you about that in a moment. That's coming up right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel's America's number one 
Sportsbook. Right now, it's winner take all time in the NBA and the NHL. And FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make every playoff shot count. Or get in on the action with college football futures. Auburn's still sitting there at seven and a half. We do enough, folks. We can make that number go up. We'll see. We'll see. Vandals America's number one sports book. Be sure to check them out. All right, Brian, final few minutes here. You talked to one of the most impressive players. You, you teed it up a little bit earlier. Um, Naheem Offered. Very talented defensive back. He's from Birmingham. Parker? You go to Parker? Yeah, that up in cool. Birmingham. He's committed to Ohio State. Props to the Buckeyes for pulling that off. Um, but Auburn is still all in. All in on this guy. Uh, so is the rest of the free world, and they should. Um, right. Just watching his backpedal and the way he sw swivels his hips and moves, you can tell he, a, he's been he's been coached. Uh, the staff at Parker deserves credit. Coach L, the trainer in the area, deserves credit. And mm -hmm. Naeem, he, he really enjoys it. But you can't teach 6'1". He's 190 pounds. That's uh, what he told me at the game. Um, I knew it was going to happen, but I got as much film of him as I could anyway. Guess how many passes they threw at him in the spring game, Zach? That would be zero. About to say zero. <laughs> as many as, as many passes as uh, me and you threw. To him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, nobody wants to throw at him, but he, he was physical in coverage. He was also physical in the run game, which is very unusual for corners. And he's a bigger kid. He's pretty strong. He's put in time. He's visiting Oregon this past weekend. He's going to take visits to several schools. I imagine Auburn will be one mm -hmm. based on what, it, what I've been told. So open-ended. I know he's committed to Ohio State, but I'm not putting as much stock in it after being around him. Talking okay. a little bit about Oregon. He's going to take an official there too. Like he's going to take his trips. What I was kind of under the impression Ohio State was the school. It's not as much as I thought originally. Okay. So similar to all these kids that are committed to USC, you, you know, it's just kind of like, yeah, they're committed, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> That's so what, pretty much what do you think that. he wants? What do you think is important to him? Is this an, how much is an Iella factor in your mind? How much of it is him wanting to play for a championship? Does he want to get to the league? Like in your mind, like what is important that Naheem offered? Development. His mindset fits that kid that like, that's going to trump everything. And I'm not saying everybody wants NIL. I get that, but like, Ohio State can coach DBs. They've proven that, and they got a really good defensive staff. So that's cool. Sure. So do a lot of other schools, especially down south. So mm -hmm. I'd imagine he's going to have a harder decision than what he originally thought. Um, once Saban jumped ship, uh, Alabama didn't seem like as likely. If, and I, I, I'm guessing they'll still try to recruit him. They had him on campus not all that long ago, but Auburn and everybody else, like Georgia, will probably get him on campus again too. I don't think we'll know on this one until closer to signing day. Um, I'm looking forward to going and seeing him play early in the season. They got a couple of big games. So hopefully somebody throws the ball at him so I can actually throw up a clip. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Get a highlight up there. That's right. The only thing I got of him was him scoring touchdowns as a running back. He's really good at that too. I'd take him as a running back in a heartbeat. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. If I was him, I'd rather be a, a corner for sure. I mean, oh, yeah. That's where <laughs> the money better is. Life. Well, it's yeah. also better for your knees. <laughs> better for everything. No question. <laughs> no question. What do you think the like the in-state ramifications are for offered? I mean, this is a dude that, you know, if Saban was still here. Or, uh, I'd I, say I don't, go to Bama. I mean, I that's flat out would be my pick. It just feels so different now, right? Like, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I don't have – somebody asked me this the other day. They said, well, what do you think about Alabama and all this? I said, ask me in six months. I said, their staff didn't start off well. They were getting organized. They messed up a few things, but they're coming around. They got some commitments. But we need to see how they do down the stretch. When they're in the middle of the season, still recruiting, we don't have any precedent because all the – well, not all, but a lot of these guys are West Coast guys. Mm -hmm. How are they going to do an SEC recruiting award for local kids? There's no precedent. So Auburn has the edge there, and I'm just going to say the same thing I've said on this show a bunch of times. If Auburn cannot beat Alabama on the in-state kids this year, they're in trouble because this is his first year. He's just getting his feet wet. It's easier to sell Alabama, whether Auburn fans want to hear it or not. It's just true. So sure. if you don't beat them in year one, that's a problem. So mm -hmm. this kid, though, it's like Ohio State. Is, that's the most random thing because I don't think in my lifetime a kid is committed to Ohio State from Alabama – that both in-state schools truly wanted. And I'm 50 years think. old. I don't think so. 
There might be somebody I'm missing. Yeah, comment comment down below if y'all can think of one. But it doesn't seem to be that common of a trend for sure. So I mean, Ohio um, State doesn't need to recruit down here much, but everybody offered offer, and there it yeah, is. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, we'll see if uh, we'll see if Ohio State can hang on to them. I'm not buying it either. So Brian, how can people check out everything you've got going on? AuburnDaily.com. Uh, we've got quite a bit with recruiting. There's a couple other comments. Besides offered his two teammates, Jordan Crawford plays for Parker, talked about him a little bit, and then uh, he's got another corner as well. Both will be visiting Auburn. It's uh, it's pretty fun right now because we're getting ready to go into the big recruiting stretch. Yep, a lot of visits coming up. Go to AuburnDaily.com to follow all of it. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. This has been Locked on Auburn.